And as always, if you have questions as I'm going through these, uh, please let me know. You know, um, we'll be moving on to 8.5 and 8.6 on Thursday. So uh, this will be our chance today to get some practice uh, proving some of these. So let's take a look at B from the worksheet. So in 1B, which is the series from n equals 2 to infinity 1 over square root of the square root of n minus 1. All right, and like I said, we're, you're gonna have this sheet for the exam, so I want you to get practice using it. All right, so what we do when we encounter one of these, you might already have an idea of convergence or divergence, but um, we need to figure out what this looks like so we can decide what test we wanna use from this sheet. Well, if that minus one, make sure, Oh, there's another N in there. That's what's missing. Let me, uh, let me fix that real quick. There should be an extra N under this. So if that minus one was not there, this would look a lot like our P series. Okay, so what that tells me is I'm going to want to compare it to a P-series, either comparison test or limit comparison test, whichever one we think is easier. And we got to figure out what to compare it to. Now this, we do the same that we did back when we were doing it with the proper intervals. The minus one is the thing that's keeping this from looking like a, a P-series. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just look at, focus at the lead terms. These are going to be what makes the difference in this one. All right, so what that tells me is this thing is going to be very similar to n equals 2 to infinity. I'm going to forget about the minus 1. 1 over the square root of n times the square root of n. Let's bring that up a little. Okay, well, that still doesn't look like a P-series. So the question becomes, what kind of simplifying can we do? Well, let's take a look. We're going to be able to use properties of exponents. And this is kind of the process you go through with these ones that um, you're going to use in a comparison test with a P-series. You take your lead terms and you simplify as much as you need. So one thing I, that we need to figure out is what are the, what's, you know, how can we combine these? <clears throat> well, I've got one over, for right now, let's leave this as a square root. We'll take care of this one in a second. But this is just n to the one half. So under that radical, I have n times n to the one half. When you multiply two things of the same base, their exponents add. So this would be like n to the first times n to the three half, and times n to the one half. So under that radical, what I'm going to have when I simplify is n to the 3 halves. Now it's under a square root. Well, that's the same thing as raising it to the 1 half power. An exponent raised to another exponent, we multiply. So now we do have a P-series. This is going to be 1 over n to the 3 fourths. So we consult our P-series. Well, if P is less than or equal to 1, it diverges. So this thing diverges by P-series. So I know whatever comparison I'm going to do, I'm going to be testing this thing for divergence. Now, if I'm using the comparison test, I have to show that this is greater than this. 
might be easy, it might not. So I'm actually going to go and use the limit comparison test and just look at the ratio of the two. And it doesn't really matter which one I put on top. All right, so we're going to use the uh, ratio test, excuse me, not the ratio test, the limit comparison test. So the limit as n goes to infinity, I'll put this one on top. That's again, that's arbitrary square root of n square root of n minus one over, and I can just write it like this, this is fine. Or we can write it in terms of radicals. One over n to the three fourths. Now, because we're choosing this one, because we saw, hey, this one is kind of similar to this one, uh, we know that this comparison is going to work out. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is uh, flip and multiply. So we have limit as n goes to infinity of n to the three fourths over. We might want to make a decision at some point if we want to keep these in terms of um, uh, radicals or change them to uh, fractional exponents. So let's go ahead and just do that now. So n times n minus one to the one half to the one half. All right. So now we want to see, you know, we, we are going to have a L'Hopital's rule, basically have an infinity over infinity case, but we might want to see if we can do any simplifying first. So one thing I notice is I have a product here being raised to the one half. So this isn't absolutely necessary. We could probably we could do it from here, but let's uh, let's distribute that exponent just to get rid of that set of parentheses. So n to the three fourths over n to the one half. Ah, sorry, that didn't come out very clean. N to the one half times, and now this is going to be n to the one half. Here, n to the one half to the one half, excuse me, n minus one. It's going to be n minus one to the one fourth. All right. Now, here's why this is going to be nice for us. And as I picked this one out specifically because it is a proper one, they're not all this terrible. Um, or all, I shouldn't say terrible. They're not all this like this. What I can do now, I've got two things of the same base. I'm going to bring this up into the numerator by switching the sign on the exponent. This is going to make our lives a lot easier. Because now what I have is n to the three fourths times n to the n to the minus one half all over n minus one to the one fourth. Now remember our goal is to get this limit to become some kind of non-zero uh, some kind of non-zero constant. All right, we are, we, this will actually work out really nice because basically n to the three fourths, let's put this over on the side here so you can see what's gonna happen in the next step, times n to the two fourths, negative two fourths, multiplying those, we add their exponents becomes n to the one fourth. So when we do that, we get n to the one fourth. Apologies, my handwriting is not good today as usual. Over 
and minus one to the one fourth. Now, both of these are being raised to the one fourth power. And that one fourth does not depend on N. So we're gonna do two things. I'll, I'll do it in two steps because I don't want you to, to miss what, what's happening here. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise N over N minus one to the one fourth power. And we have our choice. We can calculate the limit first because this is the only thing that depends on N or we can calculate the limit to the one fourth. So basically what we're doing is we're looking at it like this. We're gonna calculate this limit first and raise that number to the one fourth. Well, you could do this with L'Hopital's. The derivative just would be one over one. Or you could say, hey, I've got n to the first over n to the first as far as lead terms. This is gonna to go to the ratio of their coefficients, which is one. So this equals one to the one fourth or one, which is a non-zero constant. We compared it to a divergent. So our series, one over square root of n square root of n minus one diverges by the limit comparison test. Questions about this one? Again, I picked this one on purpose. Um, it's not, not super trivial to see where to start, but there was a couple things I wanted you to see. Number one, I want you to see how I picked the test for comparison. I basically circle the lead terms of the top and the bottom, make that its own series, and then simplify so I know what that, know something about that series. That was step one. Oh yeah, go ahead, Mark. Uh, so you use two different tests. So you use the P series, and then you use the um, the LCT, the limit comparison test. Um, is yeah. there ever gonna be a time when we have to do more than one, or is it just showing that? it can be done with more than one? Um, that's a good question. So my response to that is the reason we needed to is because I was going to do a, is because I decided to do a comparison test and I needed to show that what I was comparing it to was convergent or divergent. So the, to answer your question, if you're doing a, one of the comparison tests, because you have to compare it to something that's known, um, you're going to have to at least say that what you know is convergent and divergent with Y. So basically, that would end up in you doing two tests. One to say, hey, this is what I'm choosing to compare to, and it diverges or converges because of P series or geometric series. And then, then we have to go back and compare that do the actual comparison test. So this time it took two. Now, if you're doing integral tests or if you have a geometric series or um, you're doing ratio tests or alternating series tests, it would just be that one test. Does, uh, does yeah, sure. I just want yeah, to see, make sure that answers. Okay. You yeah, did, thank you. Okay, good. Please ask away because the stuff is very, it's different than what we've been doing and different than what you've been doing all of calculus. So please ask questions. But yeah, um, to your point, Mark, when you get something where you're gonna use the ratio test, you go straight into doing the ratio test and you get your result. You don't have to try and figure out what series you're gonna compare it to. Um, other questions about B. Let's do one more then, and then I'll let you guys try a few. You know, and, um, you know, let's just kind of look at a few of these too. Also, and it kind of, you kind of, once you get better with these, which you guys are new to them, but I can look at these and kind of tell which tests I want to use. For example, A, I have a constant to an n power. This is going to be, this is geometric. Okay. 
so if we're looking at one like A, kind of stealing this one from you, but if you know if we have one like A, where it is just the series n equals one to infinity, two to the minus n, well, that is the same as two to the minus n. Well, that's the same as two to the minus one to the n. So this is basically one half to the n. Anytime your general term is an exponential function, this is a geometric series. So this is geometric with a common ratio less than one. So we know it converges. In fact, we can even find what this one converges to because we know how to do the sum of an infinite geometric series. So this would be one that would be not only just needs the one test, but it's actually really quick because it is geometric. So if you get something that is geometric or is a P-series, it's very quick to, to say that it converges or diverges. You know, these ones where you see the factorial, we know those are gonna be ratio tests. Let's pick out one. Q is one that's going to be similar to A. You simplify this and you just have a P series. So, well, I'll ask you guys, what would you like to see next? We can do one that involves the ratio test. These involve the alternating series test. Um, alternating series. Let's see, do we have any? No real good ones for the integral test on here, unfortunately. Uh, is there anything you guys would like to see? Uh, ratio test, uh, alternating series test. Can you do one, what, what, I don't know what their name is, but it's where, oh, telescoping series. Oh, uh, don't worry about the telescoping series for right now. Um, not, that they're, not that it's not uh, part of this section, but um, we're not going to do much with telescoping series. Okay. But I'll tell you what, actually, after we've, got, we've done a couple on the worksheet, like towards the end of class, if we have time, if you want to look at that one, we definitely can. Do you think you'd be able to do A uh, for the alternating series? Sure, let's do that one. Okay. So what we're going to do on this one, this is on the alternating series part. And, and you can kind of take this as a given. Anytime you see... Anytime you see a factorial in there, it's going to be ratio test. So we already know, you know, if you see a factorial in there, that's our hint that we want to use ratio test. So we can go to the sheet and um, ratio test is right here. The biggest thing is setting up your limit. We talked about this one last time. So limit as n approaches infinity. It's going to be a sub n plus one, which is all these n's are going to become S n plus ones. You don't have to include the alternating piece because of the absolute value symbol. And you don't actually, because you don't, it's kind of like they cancel each other out. The negative one at the end and the alternating and the absolute value. We need the absolute value to make that positive because the absolute value makes this part positive. We don't need to write it. So I kind of, you know, when we're just proving a uh, series or convergent or divergent, you don't, I don't often write the absolute value signs because we don't really need them. And so n plus two factorial, so this is a sub n plus one, two to the four n times n plus one. Okay, we'll distribute that four in the next step. And here n plus one plus one is where the n plus two Two to the four n. 
over n plus 1 factorial. Again, we could put the absolute value. What the absolute value does is it takes care of the alternating ones. So this is what we're going to focus on. Once you have it written up, your main thing is going to be canceling. We talked a little bit about some of the canceling last time. Um, one of them is, you know, n plus 2 factorial is n plus 2 times, you know, n plus 1 all the way down to 1. But that there is n plus 1 factorial. Now, the other thing that's going to happen is we have 2 to the 4 times n plus 1, which is 2 to the 4n plus 4, which is the same as 2 to the 4n times 2 to the 4. And then 2 to the 4th is just 16. Um, we can take care of that later. So those are going to be the two things that we're going to do in these steps. I just want to put them on the, the side here just to preserve what we're doing. So limit as n goes to infinity, n plus 2 times n plus 1 factorial. We know this is going to be 2 to the 4n times 2 to the 4th. Keeps putting that cross on my 4s for some reason. Um, and now what it does is it makes our canceling really obvious, right? Now's the fun part. We just start crossing stuff. n plus 1, n plus 1, 2 to the 4n, 2 to the 4n. Now, anything that's constant, I like to take out of the limit, which is this 2 to the 4. So I'm going to put 1 over 2 to the 4, or 1 16th. Either way, you write it, it's fine. Limit as n goes to infinity. And all we have left that depends on n is n plus 2. The constant is not going to make a difference in this. As n goes to infinity, n plus 2 goes to infinity. So we go to our ratio test. If L is greater than one or is infinite, the series diverges. Now, so our series, I'll go back to the, the question in a second. Now, here's what's nice about the ratio test on problems like this. This one asked you to figure out if it was divergent, conditionally convergent, or absolutely convergent. The ratio test, if it's convergent with the ratio test, it is automatically absolutely convergent. So because the ratio test gave us divergent, that's it. This thing is divergent. It cannot be conditionally convergent. OK, uh, a good example. B and C are good examples of ones that would be conditionally convergent. Um, D would be absolutely convergent. And the reason is because B and C will converge with the alternating series test. But once you take the absolute value, they will diverge. And that can be shown with P series uh, comparisons. Similarly, D, we can show that you know, it converges. Uh, with the alternating series test, but if we were to take the absolute value of D, in fact, let's go ahead and look at D. I don't want you to see what happens here. I know this wasn't the one you asked about, but I think we can take a look. So first off, clearly we have an alternating series. So we could very easily do the alternating series test on this one. But what I notice is I've got an n to the first over an n cubed. So if I were to take the absolute value of this series, basically that drops off the alternating piece. And we end up with n over n cubed plus 2n squared. And like we were talking before, we take the lead terms. And we use that to write a series we're going to compare it to. 
So if we were just looking at n over n squared, excuse me, that squared cubed, well, this reduces down to one over n squared. I'm not writing it, but these are all, you know, n equals one to infinity. Um, this we know converges by P series. So what we'll do, again, I'm, I'm within the limit comparison test, but you could easily do a comparison test on this one too. So we'll do a limit comparison test. So limit as n goes to infinity of n over n cubed plus 2n squared all over 1 over n squared. So we'll flip that denominator and multiply. And look at what happens when we do that. When we multiply by n squared over 1, that gives us n cubed on top over n cubed plus 2n squared. Now, again, we could do this saying, hey, horizontal asymptote of rational expressions tells us this is going to be 1. But if we wanted to do, we could also use L'Hopital's because we've got an infinity over infinity case. This is just, this is more of a refresher. Again, you wouldn't need this one on, on this particular problem, but Take the derivative of the top and the bottom. So 3n squared over 3n squared plus 4n. Okay, we still got an infinity over infinity case. So I'm going to use L'Hopital's again. Limit as n goes to infinity of 6n over 6n plus 4. All right, once again, an infinity over infinity case. L'Hopital's again, you can use it as long as you still have your, um, uh, your indeterminate form. And you get down to six over six, which is just one, which is greater than zero. So our series, oops. Negative one to the n, n over, n cubed plus 2n squared is absolutely convergent. And I did use two tests above by the limit comparison test. And we could say the absolute value test, but what we tested was the absolute value. Um, so you don't really need to say the, the absolute value test, but I'll put it in there because we did use it because if the absolute value is convergent, we know that the original series is convergent and it's absolutely convergent. So it's, it's almost redundant to say it's absolutely convergent and the absolute value test. The big one is the, the limit comparison test. Questions about that one? Okay, let's do this. I want to give you guys some time to try and work on these. Um, to play around with a couple, practice, you know, using, using the, this sheet to show convergence and divergence. So here's what I want to do. Um, you know, what I would like you to do is just do a couple of them from number one. You know, obviously pick out ones that we haven't already done. Um, and just see how it goes. All right. If you want to do an alternating one, that's fine as well. Don't worry about two. We'll talk about two at the end as a, uh, together. So let's just take like the next 30 minutes for you guys to try a couple. Keep, let me know how it's going. If you have any questions, if you, want, if you think you got it and you want me to check it, totally fine. But I want to give you just some time to just play around with these with the worksheet, uh, with, the, uh, with the theorem sheet. 
any questions about 